Uh, I would say so, uh, because during this trade tension, there is very little that the central government actually can do. There's a limit on the fiscal expansion, uh, government expansion or uh, a government expenditure expansion or tax cut. So in terms of monetary easing, I do think there's more, uh, more room to go in the coming year, because the food inflation is certainly ticking up, but it's largely contained, especially for the pork industry. The African swine flu uh, is not spreading as fast as we previously anticipated. So I would say there is still inflation pressure in 2019, but it's largely under control. Well, I just want to bring Jason back in on that one then. Do you also agree there will be further easing and give us a better idea of just how much you are looking for? Exactly. I mean, I, we I agree with uh, Dan in the sense that we are getting more easing coming through in the Chinese economy. Mm. Uh, so uh, our house view is that we are looking at further uh, easing in terms of our, our cuts to the tune of about 200 basis points over the next one and a half mm. years uh, by 2020. So that's going to release a lot more liquidity uh, in the Chinese economy, uh, increase liquidity, increase Increase band lending. I think that's going to be positive uh, over the longer term for the Chinese economy and, in particular, the Chinese financials as well. Dan, do you agree? Do you think that would be positive for the Chinese economy going forward, or are we looking at a situation where perhaps authorities are just kicking some risks down the road? Uh, in terms of stabilizing the financial market uh, in the next one year or two, uh, I think this is largely a positive sign that a central government will further cut uh, the interest rate or do other monetary easing. But in one way or another, those injected liquidity will end up in the property market, and that's the high risk that I'm worried about. Uh, it might show up in five to ten years when a lot of the, of the hot money uh, go into uh, the housing market. And that's certainly an area that investors continue to keep an eye on for further signs of vulnerability. But what about factory activity, the manufacturing side of things? Because one thing that was interesting with the PPI data is it did show a slowing here. Do you think this is all about the U.S.-China trade tensions, though, or is this simply part of the bigger story with the growth slowdown on the mainland? Uh, I think this is majorly a domestic story. The growth is mm. slowing down, so there is a weaker demand. Um, but also, it's not all bad for the manufacturing industry because there's a redistribution of profits between the upstream industries and downstream industries. So there are a lot of factories, say, in the ferrous metal or non-ferrous metal processing, and they're doing quite well this year. It is just those input producers, uh, they're having a very hard time right now. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.